Welcome back, everybody. We are going through inequalities with fractions. We can handle this. Question number, I guess, A. All right. Given this equation, I noticed that we have fractions, which are a little scary. If you remember back when we learned this, <laughs> we were talking about fractions as like these scary little aliens. And we talked about how we needed these like soldiers or ninjas to come from the sky, right? And, and fight against the aliens. And it was a little bit crazy, Mr. Carr. I don't know what was going through his head that week. He was going a little crazy. But here we are. We're back again, OK? In order to solve this equation, we must multiply by 3. This is not new information. This is something we've learned in the past. We're starting our notes. Let's make sure that headphones are off. Let's make sure that phones are put away and not sneaky underneath the dead. They're just put them away. And remember, when we do this, we're not going to solve this question. Some of these threes are going to cross out and they're going to be eliminated. Is this first three going to cross out? Yes, because it has a three and a three. Times three, divide three. That's going to cross out. What about the second three? Is that crossing out? Three on top, three on bottom. Cross them out. What about this last three? It's going to stick around and we're going to use multiplying. All right, that's easy. That's not too bad. Because this 3 is not going to get crossed out because there's no divided by. There's no opposites. So let's look at B. Now, B was like the hard version, but it really wasn't all that hard. For B, there's a 2 and there's a 5. If I choose 2, it's not going to get rid of the 5. Or if I choose 5, it's not going to get rid of the 2. So what do I choose for B? We're going to multiply by... Anybody remember? 10. And why is it 10? It's 2, 5 times 10. So, like I said, we already learned this. Like, people, and I know it's been five days since we did math. It's okay if our brain's a little bit foggy. But we've already learned this. Multiply the two bottoms together, you get 10, and choose that. All right? So, let's look at number one. We're going to cruise through these questions, line down our equal sign. What number do you see that's in the bottom? Four. And so what are we going to do? Multiply times 4, multiply times 4, multiply times 4. And then we want to think about which one of these 4s is going to cross out. So we're going to cross off the first and the first, because there's one on top and there's one on bottom. What about this second four? Is that going to cross out? That's going to that's going to stick around. What about this last four? It's going to stay. We're not going to cross it out. It's going to stick around because there's no divided by four. So only the first four gets crossed out. And cross it out. Like actually cross it out. Don't just leave it there it's been very honestly frustrating because students say hey i don't know where i messed this question up and i look at their paper and they never they never cross anything out like that's the whole point of today every single question these fractions should be eliminated handle it cross them out okay now that we're this far we've got 3x so we're gonna write 3x here we have negative 7 and a times 4. So we just need to do negative 7 times 4, which is negative 28. Greater than symbol, 4 times negative 1, negative 4. We should be able to finish this question. Plus 28, plus 28. That's moving our numbers to the other side. This is you know, way back to the second week of school. And then we're going to finish with divide, dividing by 3. Now, the one thing we do want to remember is that when it comes to inequalities, there's only one interesting thing. If you divide by a negative number. Did we divide by a negative? No. no. 
So we're just going to keep it the same. No flip. 24 divided by 3 is 8. And that's our answer, x greater than 8. Now, as you're catching up, I want to show you something. Check out the back of this paper. That's the classwork. You got to do it on Canvas, and you got to give me the piece of paper. And if they're on one piece of paper, and if you're giving me the classwork, then you're also giving me the notes. And that means I'm going to be able to see your notes. All right? All of this is review. So you probably don't need to keep the notes to study them. You know, I don't think there's many people that do that anyways. But make sure that you got a pencil, especially if you ask to borrow a pencil. I would hope that we're actually using it with our you know, fingers and we're actually writing. OK, moving on. Number two, I'm going to put a star on number two. It's not harder, but it is weirder. For number two, we have this fraction, and it is a big fraction. Okay, We're not used to fractions that are this big. We've seen them before. The question is, how many times four do we need for this question? I know that I'm going to need one over here. That's obvious. How many do I need on this left side? One. On this left side, I only need one. So that means total, I need two. On this left side, I need only one. OK? The reason is this is all one big piece, right? You get one four per term. We've only got one term, so we get only a single four. Now, as weird as this is, it actually makes an easier question because now we have the four and the four. They cross out. And this actually ends up giving us less work to do. Okay? The fours are gone. What's left is a negative 5x plus 3. Thank you very much. Have a great day, man. And so we're going to have negative 5x plus 3 less than or equal to 8. Because all of this on the top is going to stick around. The 4 is gone. The 4 is gone. Nothing is going to change on this left side. We're not going to multiply anything times 4 because it got crossed out. Now, really quickly, minus 3, minus 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. Negative 5x less than or equal to positive 5. 8 minus 3 is 5. And then finish with divide by negative 5. Divide by negative 5. x. Nice catch. That is literally the only little 2% of something that we're trying to learn today. We're going to have to flip the sign here because we divided by a negative. It used to be a less than or equal to. Now it is a greater than or equal to negative 1. All right, I appreciate you know, our behavior in class is great right now. This is all review. I hope that you're writing something down and you got these two questions here. Remember, when you turn in your work, I'm going to be able to check it out and look at this warm up. Make sure there's notes. Make sure you were kind of onto this stuff. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit in case you're, you know, trying to catch up. We're going to move on to number three. We're going to start to pick up the speed a little bit. Hopefully our brain is kind of thawing out if we got, you know, kind of turkey and mashed potato brain or something going on. For number three, I see that there are multiple fractions, three and three. What is the best number to multiply by? Just a three. Nice job. That's perfect. Just times 3. That's it. Times 3, times 3, times 3. Now, a lot of times, students multiply by 9. But you don't have to multiply by 9. 3 and 3 is the same number. So just multiply by 3. Now let's look at the first term. 
is it going to cross off? Cross, cross. Second one, is it going to cross off? Cross, cross. What about the third one? Is it going to cross off? No. No. If you didn't realize it, this is the exact same thing as what we did at the stop. <laughs> so, surprise, same thing. Now, good news is we did all that. It's going to be a pretty easy, short, straightforward question from here. The threes are gone, so we have two. We have minus. One, one cool, I like that. One X. Always a good idea to put that one in there. Greater than or equal to. Good. Six. What do you want to move first? Two. Yeah, I would move the two first as well. Minus two, minus two. Six minus two is four, of course. Negative one X should be greater than or equal to four. And how do we finish this question? Divide. Just like we finish every question with divide. Are we going to need to flip or not? Yes. yes. And hopefully you're thinking to yourself, uh, we've, we've done all this before. Like the fraction stuff is over in like 10 seconds. And then you got one thing to remember. Did you divide by a negative? That, that's the one thing going on there. Okay. I'm going to slide over. We're going to honestly pick the speed up for number four. We're going we're gonna to go a little bit faster. What number do we need to multiply by? Five. five. So boom, five, 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 five. If I label these, you know, A, B, C, D, which one of these, multiple choice, which one's getting crossed out? B, of course. Of course it's B, because that's the one with the fraction, right? Cross it off. That means A has to be multiplied by 5. B, no. C, multiplied by 5. D, multiplied by 5. So, lots of multiplying by 5. Good news is we know how to multiply by 5. 7 times 5 is 35. What does B end up after we get rid of the 5s? Just the 2x. That's easy. Less than 5 times 2, 10x. And 5 times 1, negative 5. All right. The fractions are gone that fast. Really, I don't think the fractions are that bad. Now, this time I have x's on the left and the right. The first thing I want to do is move those x's over to the left. So I'm going to move this one. Minus 10x, minus 10x. Thirty-five minus eight x. What do you want to move next? Thirty-five. You guys are just doing a great job, especially for a Monday. You guys are doing awesome. Minus thirty-five on both sides. Subtracting 35 from both sides. And we're going to finish this question just like we finish every single question. Divide by negative 8. Divide by negative 8. Do we need to flip the sign? Yes. yes. So we're going to have x is greater than, because we had to flip it, positive 5. Because two negatives makes a positive. All right, we're killing it. These first four questions, not too bad, pretty straightforward. It is going to get a little bit more difficult, okay? When we look at five and six, I'm going to put a little bit of a, a line across here. Five and six are definitely more challenging, okay? Five and six are more challenging because... They have different denominators. Now, in the long run, it doesn't require that much thinking, but it is going to require Desmos. Okay? Three and two, so what number do I want to multiply by? Six times six times six times six times six. 
Now, a lot of times, students run into some issues because they get in this habit of crossing things out. And they look at this first thing right here, and they say, hey, we got our fraction. And they make a mistake, and they cross off the 6 and the 3. Okay? These two things, you're right, this is important, but it's not going to cross out. Because a 6 is not the same as a 3. All right? If you take your birthday, or let's say your age, and you times it by 3, and then you divide it by 3, you're going to have the same age. Right? 15 times 3 is 45, divided by 3, right back to 15. Okay? But if you take your age and you times it by 6 and you get 90 years old and then you divide it by 3 and you go back to 30, are you still the age that you started? No. So obviously you guys get it. So you can't just cross these things out. Okay? You have to use Desmos. So let's use Desmos. You type in 6 times. And once you type this in, six times hit the divide button to make a fraction six times two on top of three these numbers will never give you a fraction you'll always get a nice number four and so we write four don't forget the x so you will have to use desmos at the end of the day i know we said all oh, these questions are harder you literally have an extra 30 seconds of Desmos. That's all you got. Okay? Six times three, that's 18. Maybe you can do that in your head. Maybe you need Desmos. It's okay. Either way. What's six times four? 24. Maybe you can do it in your head. Maybe you need Desmos. And then here's where we get to this last one. What number is supposed to be on the top? One. One. And so we need six times... So you press 6 times fraction, 1 half. You could probably do that one in your head too, right? Everybody knows that half of 6 is 3. But just use Desmos. Just use Desmos, 3x. And that fast, I know I was taking a long time explaining it. You got to type two things in Desmos, and then you're done. Moving on, finishing the question, right? Minus 3x on both sides. Let's speed it up a little bit. I think we know what we're doing. 3 minus 3 is 0. 4 minus 3 is 1. Then we still have our minus 18. And we still have our minus 24. From here, we're going to want to add 18 to both sides. 1x is greater than or equal to negative 6. And we finish this question like we finish every question. Dividing by 1, we don't need to switch our signs, and we're done. It does require, take these two numbers, get the bigger one, and then you got to use Desmos. But as long as you do that, you'll be okay. All right. Number 6. Here we go. It's the last one. The last question we're doing together. And then you got, I think, seven problems to solve on paper. There's like maybe two extra ones on Canvas or something. It's not bad. Six and two, what number do we want to multiply by? Twelve. 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 All right. We're multiplying by twelve. And we can do this. 1 times 12, that's easy, it's 12. Here's where we're going to have to use Desmos. You type in 12 times divide, and that gives you 12 times a fraction. What number goes on top and bottom? Desmos tells you 10. It will always be a nice number. It will never tell you a fraction when you do that process. Greater than, we got to do it again. Does anybody know what 12 times 3 halves is? 
18 is right. Nice job. 18x, I'll show you how to do it. 12 times fraction, 3 on top of 2, it says 18. All right, cool. That's not hard. Desmos does all the work. 12 times 2, 24. That's two dozen, right? And now the fractions are gone, right? Like, I know these are fraction questions. The fractions hardly last, you know, a minute. And then the fractions are gone, and we finish them up. We're going to go ahead and move those x's to the left. I'm doing minus 18 x's on both sides. Twelve minus eight x greater than twenty four. I'm gonna go ahead and minus twelve on both sides. And if you were working ahead of me, which is good, and you're getting this far, you're probably noticing you right? Yeah. Divide by negative eight, divide by negative eight. Are we going to have to flip the sign? Yes. Yeah, we divide it by a negative. And I don't think 12 divides by 8. Let's see. 12 divided by negative 8. It says decimal. Hit the fraction button. And you get negative 3 divided by 2. So yes, it is a decimal. Negative 3 divided by 2. Okay, now, I want to show you one, we're not even going to do a question here, but I want to give you a hint for the classwork, okay? Just a, just a really quick hint. Do you see number six? For number six, I noticed that all of the X's are on the right side, and I need to get those X's to the left side. Now. We talked about how the easiest way, if all the x's are on the right, the easiest way to do that is to rewrite the whole equation, right? And to take all of this and write it onto this side, okay? That would be 3 over 2x minus 3. Take the whole thing and write it over there. And we got to do the same thing with the 9. Put the 9 on the other side as well. And when you do that, we call this rewriting when we did it last week. All right. Might have even been two weeks ago because time, time's flying this time of year. We rewrite. That does mean we're going to need to flip our sign. Remember I was saying things like the alligator is eating the 9, so the alligator should still eat the 9. So the easiest way to do a question like number 6 is to rewrite the whole question. There's one more question like this, and it's number 7. I'm not going to do the whole thing for you. If I was you, I might write that, write that little tip there. You're probably going to want to rewrite for this question. Six and seven. Now, one more little tip, and it's literally going to take two seconds here. Number 11 is a fraction answer. All right. If you get a normal number, it's not right. And if I told you that number 11 was a fraction answer, None of the other questions are fraction answers. So if you get a fraction on number 8, it's not going to be correct. If you get a fraction on number 9, it's not going to be correct. That's it for the notes today. Just take your time. Use those fractions. Remember, if you've got different denominators, multiply them together and use Desmos.